Hi. So when I flew from Dubai, I had a dinner with uh, someone called Arif Siddiqui, who was an expert in warehouse management. And he asked me like, what is AI and what AI can do, do for us in warehouse management? And I started with the current generation of AI and he said, stop there. This is the problem. You start with jargons and then we don't understand anything after that, right? So on my flight from Dubai to here, my concern was like, will I be able to communicate? Will I be able to communicate about AI here and will I end up speaking about jargons? But then all I can think about is, is the black carpet, right? I shouldn't be outside this. I, kept, I was given this warning multiple times. And the problem is I have to walk for my mind to flow, right? But I'll try to be within this circle. So uh, coming to the topic of the agentic AI, when we look at the technologies that come around us, right? We have this ability to think small on about each and every technology. If you think about the automatic transmission in cars, right? It came in early 20th century. And then after a few decades, we got, you know, uh, the reverse camera. And after that, you got laying detection and all those things. It kept coming and coming. And now with agentic AI, you, you have to think about it getting more intelligent, it taking decision on its own, and all these technologies being able to think for itself and take actions, take corrective actions without the involvement of the person. It's no more the beeps and the sounds that you hear in the car. It's no more certain things that it assists you, right? It's actually taking over the actual task itself. So it has huge trans transformative values. You see a lot of transformation happening because of agentic AI. You see this in healthcare, you see diseases being detected in unprecedented accuracy, like uh, before doctors can actually see it. You see diseases being detected even before it could appear somewhere in a predictive manner. And if you take it even further, you can, uh, let's start with the story of, uh, to see how AI would have transformed. Like if you know the story of MRI, in mid 20th century, there was a discovery related to, uh, that would enable MRI as a technology. But it is after few more decades, someone else came up with the technology to start projecting it as an image. And then it took even some more years for a doctor to actually try this on a human being, all right? So for one researcher to get to the next uh, research that has already been done, it took sometime decades and years, all right? And it was only in late 1980s that we got the first MRI machines deployed for hospitals and uh, clinics where we really started getting value out of it. Now take a step back and think what AI could have done in this case, right? What AI, agentic AI could have done is it doesn't have a bandwidth limit. So if you think about this, as human beings, we are very intelligent, but we are limited by bandwidth. We can only intake information through our eyes and ears, which has limits, right? And our communication or the way we could give out information is again through writing or uh, you know, through words. So we are limited by bandwidth. But if you look at AI, it is not limited by bandwidth, right? You, you can see that it can actually take millions and millions of tokens in a row. It can do parallel processing. For example, if you have enough computer, compute power, it could actually go through all the research material available in physics right now, and then look at the latest research that has come up and maybe in few hours or maybe in few days come up with solutions that human being might take years to get to. And this has to be the limitation of the bandwidth that we have in terms of intaking and in terms of communicating as a human, right? If we know a lot of things are coming, uh, for example, you know, Neuralink, where the people are trying to connect your brain with computers and all those things. So even when we speak of all these positives that we see in healthcare, that we see in education, for example, it, it, until now, we are in Cambridge right now, right? And someone uh, who is, let's say, in a very underdeveloped country or from a marginalized society cannot even imagine the kind of education they can get in Cambridge, right? But with AI, it's actually becoming possible. Now, even the most marginalized people can get access to the best education. Now, education is becoming accessible for people with ADHD, for people with disabilities, for people who have difficulty in learning something, you don't have to depend on a teacher anymore, right? You can go ahead and communicate and you can have self-paced learning and that too as intelligent as your teacher itself, 
which is adaptive and may, sometimes better than pizza, right? But while we think about this, right, let's take a step back. As we look at technologies, as a human, we always have a single bias. We always look at it in a very small way. We don't think about what is the second order effect and what is the third order effect, right? We began with uh, cruise control. We began with automatic uh, transmission We about reverse gears. And you also know about the NFC cards that you have in the buses, right? And you also know about the self-checkout kiosks that you see in the supermarkets these days, right? So these are small conveniences we take for granted, which we don't think beyond the actual effect of it. But if you take a step back, look at the millions of jobs that have been displaced by the NFC cards, the ticket collectors in the trains and the buses, right? The reverse, uh, the, or, or reverse cameras replaced parking guides and parking assistants that commercial trucks and buses used to have. So millions of jobs just displaced as it is, right? So the problem in itself is not progress. The problem is how we look at technology, how we look at AI. We always look at the buzzing side of technology, right? We, uh, we always glamorize the technology. We don't see what is the second order and the third order impact of these technologies on the society, on our people, on our community. So if you look at facts or if you look at email, they are not inherently the problem. And as, as such, AI will not be the problem. The problem would be that as a society, we are not prepared of what is coming. We are not prepared for the problems that it can create, the people, the most vulnerable com people of our community who will get displaced by these technologies. So as such, as a community that we have to look at is to see how these technologies is going to transform our society. So just think of this, like as AI is in entering our life in more, more and more ways, right? I, I know people who have stopped going for therapy because it's too expensive and they've taken a $20 subscription of ChatGPT, right? It's helping them in a way. But if you look at it from a different perspective, you are sharing the most intimate secrets. You're sharing your most darkest fears to a technology that is controlled by someone else, which raises a lot of privacy concerns, right? And think about how the application of technology. As human beings, every innovation, we have got the bad thing first. And will we do the same with AI is a question we have to ask ourselves. When we got advancement in nuclear physics, we got the atom bomb before clean energy, right? When we got really good at aviation, we got warfare in the sky before commercial airlines became a thing. So we have always done this. And with agentic AI, we are seeing it being militarized, right? We are seeing the most powerless societies being targeted by algorithms, which even its creators sometimes doesn't understand fully. So one of the biggest thing that we should stand, stand guard as agentic AI comes is to see that we prioritize humanity before the actual consequences of this technology takes its shape, right? It's about, will we use it to enhance humanity rather than diminish it? Will we, you know, give up the faculty of thinking, the faculty of thinking, our creativity, our critical thinking, all these things, and exchange it for little conveniences the, that we get from this AI solutions that keep coming up, right? So as a society, the biggest challenge for us will be not to ask that will agentic AI take over and transform our life, but it will be that will we stand guard for humanity and enhance humanity as agentic AI takes its place. Thank you.